to assembly member Latoya Joner just because of my story she wants to work on a protocol act that we can put into the hospitals for placements for patients with bleeding disorders. Um, so my name is Nicole aka Nikki. I'm 27 years old. I have von Willebrand disease. It is not hemophilia however it is in the family of hemophilia. So when you go to the hospital or if anyone asks you it's pretty much hard to describe it so I usually say it is a form of hemophilia. Um, the treatment plan is different. So my story today is I'm a patient and I also care for patients. I'm also a nurse. So I know the daily ins and outs as a patient and a caretaker. So I'm here to give you my story based off of my experiences on both ends. So I'm going to actually show you something. We're all telling you about our medications. We're all telling you about our stories. But are you seeing what we're actually working with at home? So one second. When we talk about mail orders, we're talking about medications and being delivered to home. Now, I live in Suffolk County, so uh, for me, a delivery is a little bit more essential. I live in a house um, and uh, the signing is never gonna ever happen for me because I'm always working 12 hours, 16 hour shifts. So either way, I have a pharmacy down the block. It would be better if I could just go to the pharmacy and get my medication as well. If I'm in the middle of a shift, instead of me having to call California and say, hey, I need my medication and it comes tomorrow. So this is uh, Von Vendi. This is a medication for me, Von Willebrand patient uh, only. This is not for hemophiliacs whatsoever. This bag right here is one dose. This is for me. Um, this is a weight-based medication, which we all know. This medication, this one dose right here is $18,000. So if this is left in my house, on my stoop, and I get about eight of these, uh, per delivery, you do the math. That's a lot of money that's getting thrown out the window, right? So that's pretty much a standard medication um, delivery for patients with hemophilia as well. They get the boxes, it's delivered like this, weight-based, and it's a lot of medication. And again, three boxes, one dose. And there's usually patients who are infusing more than five times a week. So you can imagine, right? So that's that, that's one medication. Now, I have another medication that I'm on. The bag is a little messed up, sorry. This is called Amicar. This is an oral solution. Uh, there is a pill form. This medication is $8,000. Now, the pill tablets are $16,000. The bottle is cheaper due to the solution. It's diluted a little bit more and it's less. But either way, this is administered every four to six hours based off the patient's bleeding history. So my regimen is the infusions and the solution. Now I'm a prophylactic patient, meaning I infuse as an as needed basis. So I can infuse up to 15 times in a month. You know how much medication needs to come to my house? That is a lot of medication and a lot of money to be lost if it's taken off of my house or in transit. So let's talk about transit. So I, I'm a nurse and I live in Suffolk County, but I travel back and forth to the city all of the time. If I don't have this medication on me, what am I gonna get? Something that's based off of the hospitals. Now for a patient like myself, I have von Willebrand disease. I cannot get a hemophiliac treatment. So if I don't have my medication, someone has to go to Suffolk County and get that medication for me. That's really uneventful for me and my family members. So it would be easy if I can have access to it at another CVS in the city right so that would be really best for patients who are traveling i travel to washington to albany i have to have this medication on me it's extremely important i can have a joint bleed i can have my menstrual cycle i can have a nosebleed how am i going to stop it if i don't have my medication that's me so my patients when they come and they're bleeding and they're afraid this is a big story that all of us have as far as bleeding disorder patients no one listens so this is meaningful so now i have medication at home that means when i'm bleeding and i know i'm bleeding i can treat myself but what about when i don't have my medication what about when my patients don't have medication that's because no one's believing them they go to the hospital i'm bleeding i'm in pain but your lab work doesn't show or oh, i don't really see it uh, but you know your history you know something's wrong so now you have people not listening to you but you're crying out for help so what do you do you have to keep finding someone until you try to find somebody who will actually listen to you. And that is very, very hard. I mean, myself, I went through four hematologists just to find somebody to actually listen to me. Why? Because I have Von Willebrand. 
Um, I'm not a hemophiliac, so my numbers don't represent hemophilia. My numbers represent whatever's going on in that moment. So my numbers reflect off of whatever's happening right there at that time. So when they spin my blood work, and at that time, if I'm not bleeding, I'm normal. So they go, why are you getting medicine? You're, you're fine. But in five more minutes, I'm gonna hemorrhage right now. I promise you, and it's happened. I went to the ER, I was bleeding, I complained about bleeding. Oh, you're not, you're fine. We don't see anything coming out. I got home, I hemorrhaged all over my bathroom floor. And I called them and I said, hey, by the way, I'm bleeding everywhere and I have no medication at home. What do you want me to do? That is what a woman has to go through as a patient with a bleeding disorder because no one believes us until we actually maybe show a picture or stay in the hospital and bleed. So I advocate so hard because I was, there were so many times where I cried because I couldn't believe of what was coming out of me and no one would believe me. I don't even wear pads. I can't wear pads because diapers are the only things that can probably hold whatever wants to come out at the time. I can't travel from Suffolk County to New York City without having chucks in my trunk, extra clothes, extra diapers, and plenty of medication because I'm afraid that I'm gonna bleed. That's how patients like myself live every single day. Now from another perspective of a woman with a bleeding disorder, I've been presented with two options when I didn't have someone who believed me. Oh, get a hysterectomy. Oh, have a baby. That's how my story went viral because I, what, it was 2014 I believe I met Jeremy. Um, I, that was the last conversation I had with a doctor in Suffolk County. I was on several birth controls. They not, none of them worked. Nobody believed me, but they knew I was bleeding. And they said, we can't help you anymore. Get a baby, have a baby, or have a hysterectomy. I was 21 in nursing school. I missed the whole end of nursing school because no one believed me. And I was stuck in the hospital and no one believed me. But when I met the New York City Hemophilia chapter, that day, that day changed my life because that day showed me patients who lived just like me. And there was doctors there. There were other people I could reach out to. I finally found a doctor and got my regimen and found people who were like pretty much begging for help just like me. And since that day, I've progressed into a perfect person with a bleeding disorder because now I can tell patients there's resources. There's people that's living like you. It is possible to have your medication at home. It is possible to learn how to infuse oh, or to let you feel miserable about your blood disorder. And that's not fair. And as a woman, I shouldn't be told when to have a baby. That's not fair and I shouldn't lose my chance to have a baby because you don't want to do your job. Not fair at all. So since then, I now have a perfect regimen and I've been out of the hospital four months. I was in the hospital every month for a year and a half until somebody got it right. And now I'm forever grateful for the chapter. I'm forever grateful for the doctor that is on my team and I'm forever grateful for the support team that I have because there were times where I was done. There was times where I gave up. There was times where I really believed that I was never going to be a normal girl. And now I feel like I can get on a plane and I can travel, live my life. Now I feel like I can, like I can drive from Suffolk County to New York City. Now I feel like I can be me and now I can help other patients. Now, now I can find somebody just like me and say, hold on, let me hold your hand. Let me guide you because you don't deserve to live like you're scared every day. You don't deserve to be treated like you don't mean anything and you don't deserve to be treated like your voice doesn't matter because it's important that somebody listens to you because you can help the next person. And that's how this family grows. And that's how we all sit down and this comes together because we talk to people like you who are listening to us and understanding how this is very important. And the numbers don't matter because we matter because without us, there wouldn't be this, there would be no money in the pharmaceutical company there'll be no doctors there'll be no nurses but we're here fighting for a fighting chance to maintain this so we can live a healthy life and because of this i because of this i now can choose when i want to have a baby and i can choose when i want to have a hysterectomy because yeah now yeah, sure why i'll take it out when i'm ready right so i love your support i appreciate your support and everybody here because we all have a fighting chance and we should all feel like that every single day. And we should continue to lend out a hand to those people who are looking for help. So 
I hope you take this with you, this beautiful picture, <laughs> because we can tell you numbers and, and tell you stories all day. They don't matter. But when you see something like that and you realize that numbers and this go together, you realize that these patients are fighting and crying for something like that to help them live their lives, just to stop them from bleeding, just for them to live a normal life. That is what you see. From now on, you're gonna go to Congress, you're gonna be like, look, this box, this bag, this is one. <laughs> this is one. That, that patient, not that poor patient, that patient needs 10 of these in a week. This is $18,000 for one dose. Patient needs that, oh, let's not forget this, you know, or pill form, they also need this too. So it's important that we don't put the numbers into perspective, we put the patient's care into perspective. And then we can say, okay, how much money do they need, right? <laughs> so, so I hope you take this with you. I appreciate your time and thank you for coming. Um, I know we appreciate you, New York City Hemophilia Chapter and the Bleeding Disorders Coalition. Thank you.